Hi everybody, and welcome to Mythic Mechatork. Now, I should have had this video out to you guys a long time ago, but life has been crazy, so a little bit late. Hope it helps somebody, at least. Um, so how this fight is broken down, um, you need a certain class makeup. Um, two Death Knights is extremely important, especially for Phase 3. Uh, you can get away pretty easily with just one Death Knight in Phase 1 and 2, but in Phase 3, when two bots are dropping, two DKs are very important. Uh, also keep in mind, it doesn't matter if they are Blood Death Knights or just DPS Death Knights. Uh, the AoE Mass Grip should really not be used unless it's an emergency and if you do use it, you shouldn't Mass Root right away. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, second off, uh, so the DKs, you want at least two Druids. Uh, you need to alternate Mass uh, Entangle on the adds. Now you can get away with single target entangles up to the third add. But honestly, it's just easier if you have at least two druids with mass entangle. And lastly, I'd recommend at least two priests um, for mass dispels and uh, life grips uh, and levitates. So two DKs, two druids, and at least two priests, and this gets a lot easier. Without those, you're going to have a real bad time in phase three. Um, so besides that, this is two tanked. Um, right now, we're using a blood death knight alt. Uh, basically, he is only in for the grips. I tank this as a uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter 95% of the fight. Uh, he taunts to reset the stacks, and once the stacks are zero, um, I, do, I just taunt right back. Otherwise, uh, also keep in mind, if you do it this, uh, this technique, that Blood Death Knight does not have to be super geared. Um, I believe he was like 390 something when we did this first kill. Um, otherwise, two tanks, and you also want three heal. I'm sorry, not three. Five heal. Get a little distracted. So five healers. Uh, you can do it with four, but it's so much easier if you don't. Um, especially in phase three when everything gets hectic. Uh, you need dedicated tank healers, otherwise the tank's going to die. Um, Alright, so let's talk about the fight. Uh, let's start out, and what I did was is I marked a small rectangle right here along this rock. Now, this is the steps you come down. Uh, one safe point here, another safe point over here, and one behind me. So we make this rectangle with the symbols, and at all times everybody should be in the rectangle. Uh, this is due to the new mechanic that when you drop your debuff, your electricity debuff, it will leave a puddle on the ground. And if you step in the puddle, you're dead. I guess almost, I'm not saying it's impossible to keep somebody alive, but you're probably dead. So to do this, you need to maximize the space, so what we do is we make a little rectangle so you can get a little crafty in the back about your positioning, uh, that way you don't run out of room. So as long as you're in the rectangle, you should never get hit. Uh, so everybody should be in melee at all times, unless you're using the sliver, the trinket I hate the most. Then you should make a secondary group in the back. Then you should make a, a death grip group for the, the bots. So let's get into it. So on the pull, I'm going to bring it back here. And you can see the rectangle a little bit better. Everybody should be coming to the square or the rectangle, but of course people won't because they don't listen. So right here you see the uh, blood DK is already out here uh, to get the first death grip. And the cannon, the cannon will kill most people if you get hit. Just easy, just don't get hit by it. And when you're in melee, it's a lot easier to dodge. So once the first spot gets gripped, it gets rooted in place. And uh, this is the first gigavolt charge. Uh, positioning wise, you can have two people go back here, two people back here, and one person back here. Uh, some people assign uh, symbols to locations, we didn't. We didn't think it was necessary. Uh, we didn't really have much of an issue with this. So it's up to you whatever what works better for you. So if you want to make like a star, a diamond, and a, a nipple area, so the star will always go to star, that works. Uh, we just let them do what they, they want to do. Um, this fight, and I'll be honest with you, this fight is 95% mechanics, and DPS isn't an issue. If you do the fight correctly and just focus on the mechanics, um, it, it's, it's not bad. Now, I say that with this in mind. We wiped so many times, even on our, our repeat kill, wiped so many times because DPS is trying to scumbag some extra damage and didn't handle the mechanics. So maybe they didn't get behind the wall of a way, or they get hit by something and they died and killed everybody else. So I can't emphasize enough, it is better to waste three, four seconds of DPS to be safe than it is to get the extra damage. 
Alright, so the second death grip. And look at this positioning here. You do not ever want the bots grouped on top of each other. Because then if two people get in those two bots on top of each other, you can't tell who is what symbol. You just can't tell. Alright, so this is the other huge mechanic change in Mythic. When he does Wormhole Generator, three people get shaped and two to three people get knocked up in the air. So you have to dispel the people to get out. And the people in the air, um, how we had this set up is if you don't have any safe way to get down, so if you don't have like Fell Rush or a Leap or um, Slow Fall, like if you cannot get down safely by yourself, you call for a life grip. So here it goes. So you see somebody flying up in the air now. He can uh, disengage or wild charge, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then what we do is we have the priest mass dispel. It's just the safest way to get out of this. Uh, another thing to look out for is if you get hit by this blast off and then take the passive damage from the actual landing of blast off, you can die too if you're squishy. So you don't want to be in this at all. And then we reset back to positions, back into the rectangle. As you can see, uh, my this was the first week of the new patch. The LVI was broken, so red means I have threat. It's now fixed, but just keep that in mind. So I'm taking the majority of the time right now. There's eight stacks. Uh, the DK should be taunting soon. It normally doesn't get that high, but I think I taunted a little too early. Um, now, if you tank the entire time, uh, this becomes clockwork. It's, there's really no randomness for the tank. I always get this giggle volt charge every time, and every time uh, blast off is coming, so I just wait. Uh, the off tank might taunt, he might not, if he doesn't, I just wait to blast off and then I run behind. Uh, I saw one bomb go over here, so I'm just going to leap to the other place. Now looking, uh, I see a better angle. You see this right here? This is the electricity. If you step in that, you're almost guaranteed dead. You cannot step in it. So I know that this corner here, if everybody is in the rectangle, is safe. So I'm going to drop it in this corner. Like that, I don't hit anybody. Um, this is the only real random part for tanks, is whatever tank gets uh, miniatured is 50-50. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's him. So when you're in the bots, uh, you only have 24 seconds versus the, the minute you had in Heroic. So what I recommend for this is to do a easy call. You have one person who uh, focuses on calling out two people, and then one person calling out the other person. So say, let me pick two people on the list. Let's say uh, Bales and Salir. So I'm normally pretty vocal in the raid, so if I go in, I'd be like, Bales red, Salir blue. And then one of those would be like, uh, you're green. Then I'd be like, Bales purple, Salir red. And then they'll be like, you're blue. So it's like clockwork, like bam, 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 bam. After three, we're out, and it takes like eight seconds. That's the way I recommend it. One person calls out two, then one person calls out the person, the caller. Uh, we don't have any designated people. It's whoever speaks up first and starts calling the, the colors out is the caller. So it's the best way to do it. Also use an add-on so you can see people who is in what robot. It just shouts their name. Um, basically, you've seen the entire fight. Phase 3 gets a little hectic, but um, it's all about the mechanics. Um, so, that's not this one, never mind. Now say if this person here dies with a bomb right here, he drops a pool right here, and then people will step in and die, so they cannot die anywhere besides behind the rock. So the DK taunted, drop stacks, a ton to right back. Now, for tank healing, you need to have a dedicated tank healer that just heals the tank. I bring this up because I would die if it wasn't for that. Like in phase 3, when he has these double charges doing double damage, and let me talk about that real quick. Um, if I don't get spam healed in phase 3, I die. Um, it's not just because I'm a DH, every tank will die. It's just there's so much tank damage going out. So we have a dedicated healer or two healers who heal the tanks in every fight, not just this fight. And if the tank ever dies, it's that healer or healer's responsibility. And we do healing accountability. So it's very easy in phase three, a healers freak out and start healing the raid and leaving the tanks alone, and the tank just dies in five, six, ten seconds. 
So it was very imperative that you have a tank healer set up who knows it's their only, not only job, but biggest job to keep the tank alive. So this one, um, we're going to get the bombs at the same time as Wormhole. Uh, basically, you need a master spell and grip any of the bombs that get picked up in the air. And I'll always have this one. I always have the bomb during this wormhole, every time. So I see this positioning here. You see these, these puddles. I want to get as close as I can to this one without stepping in it to maximize space. And then you have a couple seconds to get out of it before uh, your own ticks on you. And that was a good spacing right there. Now, if you have good damage, uh, you'll get two robots or two, uh, two world enlargers at a time. Which, I forgot to bring something up. I'd do it here. Alright, so, besides these small ones, you also get one giant person. You can see this giant chicken right here. Uh, if this chicken steps on anybody normal size, they get stunned and take like 130,000 damage. If he steps on a miniature, they're one shot. So the trick is, is whoever is big never moves. Everybody gets away from them. And once that is clear, if they have to move for, like, say, a cannon shot, they can move without worrying about stepping on anybody. So the three people are jumping in. You can see the Adam when they're calling their names out. Buster Cannon, he moved last because there's people moving underneath him. You can run under a, t a big person and not get hurt. But if that big person moves, and then you're taking damage. At this point, we're going to have uh, one or two more robots. And then we're going to push them. So the trick of phase one is to do 60% damage and not have people die. That's it. The fight is actually not bad. This is one of the hardest fights this is the hardest fight up to until now. I'll say this is the second hardest fight in the entire dungeon. Um, all because there's personal responsibility and one person can screw up the entire raid. So phase two starts. Uh, we have two robots that go away, so we put them in place. And now we just stand still. We just don't move. Uh, he's going to do a set of miniatures here. They're going to jump in. They'll call it out. And you, you don't move unless you absolutely have to move. That's it. Make sure you get the bombs behind. Try to stay in the rectangle as much as you can. Now, if you stand in this explosion, you're one shot. I've seen it happen too many times. So you cannot stand in that. And there's the big person. They're just staying away from everybody else. Dodging the flames as a big person, by the way, is real pain in the ass. Um, so, we have two more robots. We have a lot of shrunk. At this point, the shrunk people should not get into the robots. The next set of uh, world enlargers should. Right now. So now they should get in it. And then everybody should move away from uh, the, the big. Now the only hard part here is this wormhole plus the sheep explosion. So once we get teleported, the rule is is mass dispel. And then all littles move. Every little person needs to move. You wait about three seconds. All uh, medium sized people move. And then the big person never moves. So I waited, 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 and then I ran out. Now, this overlap here is bad because people are running out bombs. There are a ton of fires. There's still robots. And um, he's going to land here in a minute. So here you should use personals if you're going to die. Here's this uh, landing circle. You'll die if you don't get out of it. And phase three starts. And then you have another set of exploding sheep, which is very dangerous to get him back into position. Now you bloodlust and use second potion, use cooldowns. I'm trying to dodge them all and then bring them back. Now you need to go back to the rectangle, which we'll see if they do, I don't remember. So dodge the cannon. Now you get two robots at a time. This is why you want two DKs, because you need two to grip both robots, and you need two, you need a mess and tangle for this one, mess and tangle for the next one. The off tank just taunts just to uh, drop the stacks. This is a burn phase. 
So here's the wormhole. Now this wormhole is really hard as well because you get sucked in, so you have to dispel, you have to grip people or levitate people. You right at the same time you're gonna have exploding sheep and a buster cannon. People can and will die to this. So you gotta get out of all this, exploding sheep, and then his cannon. And I we lost one person to that. A lot of our wipes. Uh, I just got hit by that because I'm bad. A lot of our wipes right there. Well, in this fight, happens right there. A lot of people just die. At this uh, at this point, it gets a lot easier until I think the second wormhole, and then it gets a little crazy again. I'm just gonna stand right against this rock because yeah, I'm gonna jump in. And like I said, I, I just call this out. Like I'd be like mini red, sacred blue. Then I'd be like mini yellow, sacred purple. Then they'll call mine out. Then be mini yellow. It's just how you should be doing the calls. It's the easiest way to do it. We all jump out at the same time. Alright, so we're just finishing this off now, 8%, dodge the cannon, more exploding sheep soon. I could go out there and start hitting them, but I was playing safe and sorry, I wasn't trying to parse here. Yeah, this was a very clean kill for us, like the cleanest first kill we've ever had. Now this wormhole is the bad one if you make it this far and he's still not dead. Uh, it's going to be a wormhole plus fire that's already out plus I think it's a cannon shot as well. Yeah, 11 seconds cannon shot. But we killed it. So that's the fight. Um, it is very, <laughs> very irritating and frustrating. I think it took us like 78 wipes to kill it and then like another 40 wipes to kill it a second time. Um, so that's the fight. If you have any questions, please leave your uh, questions in the comments, and thank you for watching.